This is the new Hyundai i20N. It's a smaller, more affordable alternative to the i30N and also a competitor to the Ford Fiesta ST. And in this video, I'm gonna find out if it's any good by checking out its exterior, its interior upgrades, its engine upgrades as well, all the things they've done to the chassis. I'm gonna test out the brakes. Look, red brake calipers, they're bound to be very strong. And of course, I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from zero to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, what's the matter with you? Make sure you do it and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of these videos. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Let's start this video by talking about the most important upgrade to this i20N, and it is, of course, the engine, which is an N-Turbo Smart Stream G. I don't really know what that's all about, but what I do know is that it's 1.6 litre four cylinder turbocharged petrol with 204 horsepower and 275 newton metres of torque, driving the front wheels via a six speed manual gearbox. Now, in a moment, I'm going to launch it and see how quick it is from 0 to 60 and over the standing quarter mile. But before we do that, let's hear it first. <laughs> that's wicked! That's enough! I tell you what, no other small hot hatch sounds anywhere near as good as this. This car doesn't only sound loud, it looks pretty loud as well, doesn't it? So it's got a redesigned bumper of the standard i20N. Look, you've got front splitter, this red stripe here. Though on red cars, it's actually gray. So you still get that contrasting effect. It's got this new grill. And if you look closely, you see there's checkered flags in the grill. Here we've got some plasticky bits and fog lights. And look, actual real vents that I can put my fingers in and the exit here, smooth airflow over the wheels. Here at the sides, you get 18 inch alloy wheels as standard and red N brake calipers. You also get these side skirts, which extend quite a way outwards. The car sits low to the ground as well for a sporty looking stance. Yeah, does the job. Anything I don't like, and it's the same with the normal i20, too many lines on this car, a bit like my face. Here at the back, you've got a deeper rear bumper, more red stripage and an integrated diffuser, which I think is pretty much a fake diffuser. What's not fake though, is the exhaust. Look at that. In fact, it reminds me of the exhaust from a Porsche Boxster. You've got your i20M badging there and you don't just have a roof spoiler, you have a roof wing. I'm sure it has no aerodynamic benefits, but it does look kind of cool. The end version of the i20 has upgraded brakes over the standard car. So you have 320 millimeter discs up front and 262 millimeter discs at the back. Anyway, let's check out their performance. Okay, here we go, 70. Right, let's do this brake test now. Oh, Ooh, stop from 70 miles an hour in 42 meters. Not bad at all. Hyundai's made a load of changes to this car's chassis to make sure it's fun to drive. So they've upgraded the suspension. You've got stiffer springs, you've got more aggressive dampers, there's beefier anti-roll bars at the front and the back. They've also fitted it with some bespoke tyres specifically developed for this car by Pirelli. They've also changed the camber so it's more aggressive for improved cornering grip. They've actually strengthened the body in loads of different places. So you've got stiffer steering knuckles at the front and a stiffer rear torsion beam at the back. They fitted it as standard with a limited slip differential at the front to help you put your power down. Let's see what this i20N is like to drive then. So, engine, strong lower down, but it starts to run out of puff above about 5,500 RPM. Also, it does this weird thing when you change up, it increases revs randomly. Like there, I lifted it off there and it like went boom. It's even worse if you're higher up the rev range. So look, I'll be in second, watch this. There you go, look at that. I mean, it's just really odd. That is my only complaint really, because the rest of it is awesome. Yes, the suspension is quite far, but it does stay so flat in the corners, this thing. And coming out of a corner, that diff just hooks up. It really does. I really like the steering as well. Sometimes you can feel it squirming in your hands as that diff is fighting to put its power down. You get a bit of torque steer, but my gosh, it's nicely weighted, the steering. It's precise and the car just, <laughs> absolutely flies through the bends it's really good and it's not like completely inert it will move around under this car it's playful it's fun it's wicked i tell you what if you want a car that is fun on road and fun on track this is it and the brakes are epic as well which is good if you're going on track you're going to need strong brakes one of my problems with the fiesta st is that its brakes can soon fade on track though on a road that car is really nicely balanced one thing the Fiesta doesn't have that this has is auto blip. It's really handy, look at that. 
for getting the right revs, matching to your wheel speed. But if you want to, you can press a button, turn it off, and then you can heel and toe. And the pedals are nicely spaced for heel and towing if you'd rather do that yourself. But if you're a bit of a novice, or you haven't quite mastered it, and you really want to fly along the road, the auto blip really helps and it's seamless. Gear shift is good, I like the gear shift. It's got a nice solid mechanical feel to it. It's precise. I'll tell you what, Hyundai has done a great job on this car. For a blast down a twisty road, this is my small hot hatch of choice. Apart from a GI Yaris, of course. GI Yaris is still the king, but it's more expensive and you can't actually get one anymore. They're all sold out. This though, for the money, is absolutely blooming epic. What about though, when you're just cruising around? Do you know what, the suspension is fun, but it's not terrible. It's okay over bumps, it's not too jarring. You are constantly being jiggled about a little bit, but not in a really annoying way. You could live with it. The car itself is a little bit noisy as well. You get a bit of tire noise, a bit of wind noise, but it's not bad. You can live with this every day, no problem at all. So if you want a hot hatch that's practical and you can live with it and will be reliable, I think this is a really good car. I'm going to talk you through the upgrades on the interior over the normal i20. So you get a sport end badged steering wheel. Got these two buttons here for your different end custom modes. There's a rev matching button there as well, so you can turn it off and on quite easily when you're driving. You get some bespoke dials. And when I go into end mode, you get this fiery effect graphic around your rev counter. There's also bits of like the light blue trim here, which is end signature color there. Also there on the climate control buttons and on the seat, sporty bucket seats. They group you pretty well when you're going around a corner and they're reasonably comfy as well over a longer distance. You've got some aluminum pedals down here. You've got some aluminum end branding there on the sills. You've also got some bespoke gauges and stuff here. Yeah, it's all pretty nice. Some hot hatches have slightly smaller boots than the cars on which they're based because they have bigger exhaust systems which eat into the space or the battery gets relocated from the front to the back. Not so with this i20N. You get the same 352 litres capacity and a very useful force floor like that. Isn't that great? However, if you need an even bigger boot, maybe check out the i30N. The i20N has plenty of rear space for a small hot hatch here in the back. I also like the fact that, look, you've got this little kind of checkered flaggy turquoise colory scheme on the seats. That's quite cool. Knee room's decent, head room's decent, though there is ever so slightly more headroom in a Volkswagen Polo GTO. Now, one thing that you do have with all these sort of sporty hot hatches is the fact that they often have integrated headrests to the front seat. So it means if you're in the back, you end up having to peer around like that if you want to see out the windscreen, which is a bit annoying. And that brings you on to five other annoying things about this car. This engine seems to have a really heavy flywheel. It revs quite slowly and you get terrible rev hang when you lift off the accelerator. Look foot's off and look at that look I mean look at that like a Formula One car revving it is not <laughs> with the Fiesta ST you can get it as a practical five door or a sporty looking three door there's no such choice with the Hyundai i20n it's five door only whether you like it or not when you're configuring a custom drive mode and you want to change the ESC from normal to sport and then you think do I want to go all the way off well actually no I just want it normal again you have to toggle all the way through fully off which means you have to do that and hit yes before you can go back to normal again which is a bit of a faff this car's horn just does not match its looks I mean listen to this it's like the horn of a van it's like I'm going to be delivering some Amazon packages this car's only done 5,000 miles yeah look at the wear on the driver's seat side bolster it's not really good is it that it's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. You know certain cars use their satellite navigation to tell when you're approaching something like a roundabout and they tell you to back off the throttle and slow down to save fuel. This one uses its satellite navigation to let you know when you're approaching a twisty road and it tells you to put it into end mode for more extreme and sporty driving. I mean, that's just brilliant. The Hyundai i20N comes fully loaded with kit, so you don't really have to spend any on options. You get stuff like a reversing camera, parking sensors, a heated steering wheel, heated seats, wireless charging for your mobile phone, cruise control, lane keeping assist, all that stuff as standard. The only options fitted to this particular car are the cool blue paint, 550 quid, two-tone roof, 500 quid, and a Bose sound system, 
500 quid. You don't need this sound system, but I'd go for the paint of the two-tone roof if I were you. This car weighs in at 1,190 kilos, which means that it's lighter than its key competitors, the Ford Fiesta ST and the Volkswagen Polo GTI. And lightness is a good thing in a hot hatch. It's also the exact same weight as Hyundai's i20N Coupe WRC Rally Car. There's a pump pack for you there. In most cars, if you press the accelerator at all when your foot's on the brake, yeah, it'll just cut all power to the engine and it'll just bog down. Not in this though, the Hyundai will let you do both at the same time, so you can left foot brake just like a rally car driver to help you get through corners quicker. As well as the normal eco, normal, and sport drive modes, you can actually customize your own driving modes. And there's two options, you can customize one, or two. Two different choices of customizable modes and you have lots to choose from. So you can choose between three different settings for the engine, three different settings for the steering, three different settings for the stability control and three different settings for the exhaust sound, three different settings for the rev matching and it says launch control. I think we should launch it. So let's do 0 to 60 in around 6.7 seconds. But what are we going to do? brutal that was that's good 6.25 to 60 quarter mile 14.79 i'll take that right i'm gonna launch it again because i think i can do better so here we go that's a good one ah oh, it's good what's the quarter mile 6.4 to 60 quarter mile is 14.6 that's good that is So then, what's my final verdict on the new Hyundai i20N? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy the i20N. It is my favourite of the small hot hatches that isn't a GR Yaris.